I want shorter games with worse graphics, and I am not kidding. It's 2021 during the making of this video, and even having already gotten my COVID-19 vaccination, which if you haven't already and are able to do, you should absolutely go and do so, it's hard to say anything has gotten better on average. The world is bad off in a lot of ways, but this is a gaming channel, so the question I should be asking is, how does the failing state of the planet affect my gaming? Essentially, modern consoles are impossible to buy, PC part prices have skyrocketed, and it's just harder than ever to simply play modern games. What the hell happened? Well, allow me to explain, as well as offer what I think is the best advice for fixing this in the short term, making games with worse graphics. Although when I say worse, I'm exaggerating. I more so mean less realistic. I'll get there. But first, we need to talk about how we got here, other than, you know, simply COVID, buying a modern console is harder than ever, and I'm uh, not talking about the Nintendo Switch here, because Nintendo's game library will always be its own weird and specific thing. Obviously, if you mainly want to play Nintendo games, the Switch is the way to go, but I'm mainly talking about PC games, the PS5, and the Xbox Series X. In terms of pricing, not only are these systems fairly expensive, which is completely fair for their function, mind you, but higher than many can currently afford, but they are also being produced in limited supply. Not just thanks to COVID, but also a shortage of semiconductors needed in construction. The bottleneck of components required for console production obviously creates a small supply, though this can be seen as a sort of give-and-take thing in terms of sales. See, this thing called artificial scarcity, which is the practice of purposefully producing a limited supply of your tech, game, console, what have you, and then marketing it as such to get people who may have otherwise not been interested to feel like they have to buy. After all, if there's only one PlayStation 5 left in stock, you're more likely to buy it rather than choosing not to and then regretting your choice down the line. Nintendo has been practicing artificial scarcity in the world of gaming for the longest time. Their most recent example being games like Super Mario 3D All-Stars, a compilation game that they claimed they were only going to be selling up until March 30th. 31st, 2021, and then you would no longer be able to buy it. This entices people into a sale, as when April 1st rolls around, surprise, you no longer have a choice in the matter. Except it's currently July 2021, and the game is still for sale online, just not for digital download. So even without limited production, claiming that the game is only available for a limited time may squeeze a few extra purchases out of wary shoppers. In reality, however, especially with consoles, what tends to happen if you produce far too few of a product? is scalping. Scalpers are people who buy up bulk supplies of a product to the point where it's sold out entirely, and then resell it at a markup. Since the product is no longer available via retail, your only option tends to be these resellers. This is why many stores will have a limit one console per customer policy in order to help curb this practice. But limited production, either on purpose or via pandemic, only helps scalpers corner the market further. If there are, say, 100 PS5s available in your region at, let's call it $400 a pop, a scalper can invest 40 k into this and then sell them at a markup of, hell, let's say $200 and make 20 k without that much effort. It's shitty, it's gatekeeping, and it's also not the company's problem to do anything about it. After all, they got their initial sale, who cares if only like five people actually own a PS5? This is an oversimplification, but the results are the same, as at the time of making this video, your chances of getting your hands on a modern console are golden ticket level rarity. As a result, many have turned to the ever pretentious arms of PC gaming for their fix. Steam, Epic Games, Xbox Game Pass, Itch.io, there's many a digital platform to replace physical ones. However, guess what? Not only are scalpers active in the PC part scene as well, but a different flavor of capitalism has fucked it all up as well. Oh, cryptocurrency! You've heard of it, I'm sure. It's some bullshit. There's an actually interesting and potentially useful technology behind this, being the blockchain, but any chance of this being able to be used for environmentally friendly or ethical purposes has been thrown out of the window by things like Bitcoin and NFTs. You've probably heard this explained by many a person, maybe oversimplified or perhaps even badly. This will be no exception. Very basically, cryptocurrency is comprised of digital tokens which are earned by a user having their computer solve extremely long and extraordinarily difficult math problems. The more puzzles you solve, the higher chance you have of earning crypto. The processing power required for this is most often offloaded to your GPU, otherwise known as a graphics card. As a result, some particularly 
motivated individuals have taken it upon themselves to compose farms of GPUs, buying up all the cards they can to plug in and solve Sudoku. This is why, if you're watching this video near release, you may have found it difficult to find a graphics card on sale these days. Many are priced far higher than their actual value or simply out of stock anywhere you look. Not to mention, having graphics cards running 24-7 solving fun puzzles. <laughs> Not to mention, having graphics cards running at max capacity 24-7 tends to run down their chips fairly quickly, wearing the cards down to their breaking point. So be wary of any cards you may see being sold for too good to be true price points, as there's a chance it was a card used for crypto mining and will kick the bucket within a few weeks. And this isn't exactly relevant to the point of my video here, but between cryptocurrency and non-fungible transactions, the amount of electricity being burned through here and graphics cards and other computer components being being scrapped and thrown into dumpsters is like actually causing a noticeable negative impact on the planet? This isn't up for debate. Crypto and NFTs are bad for the environment. Crypto, not even once. So what's the answer here? Scalpers and miners have all but destroyed the modern gaming market here by making the consoles and graphics cards required to power those high fidelity graphics expected by the modern gamer all but inaccessible. It would seem to me anyways that the solution would be laws cracking down on these practices, which some countries have done to their credit. I would argue the solution is not, as many have suggested, cloud gaming. This is technology like Google Stadia, where instead of needing a powerful PC or console, one simply needs a steady internet connection to stream a game directly to their TV, like how one might stream a show on Netflix, with button inputs on a controller using predictive AI to reduce latency. It's a neat idea, and it offloads the hardware demands required of many games to professional PCs somewhere else in the world that you don't have to worry about paying for. Here's the thing though, the technology behind this cannot be good enough to be comparable to playing games on on local systems until the infrastructure for a high-speed fiber internet is available to enough of the world. Saying the technology is available and is therefore a solution ignores the fact that only a minority of well-off people would have a playable experience. Everyone else with average internet speeds or in parts of the world where servers are unavailable are stuck to local access gaming for now. While I would argue that high-speed internet is absolutely an essential utility at this point and should be made available to as many people as possible as quickly as possible, the reality of this is decades away at least. Cloud gaming isn't useless by any means, it's simply not the solution in the short term. Other companies have sought to offer all-in-one devices as a solution, like Valve's Steam Deck, an AIO portable PC with a gamepad and a screen built in. But at the time of filming, the pre-orders have been a bit of a mess. Besides, new tech at a cost can only help people as far as scalpers can be curbed. If the Steam Deck can avoid being being scooped up en masse by resellers, it will be a possible solution for those who can afford it. However, until we can truly tear down capitalism piece by piece, the best thing to ensure the majority of people aren't barred from playing all but the oldest titles is, we need worse looking games. Well, not worse, okay, just like simpler environments, lower polygon counts, better performance, whatever it takes to have modern titles available to people without modern hardware. It's generally understood that in order for a game to be more realistic looking, the offload to your hardware has to be more demanding. Otherwise, sacrifices have to be made in terms of frame rate or resolution. Sure, a game may look gorgeous, but if you're playing it at five frames a second, you're essentially watching a slideshow at that point. Improvements to rendering software in game and Engines have saved us from what I would call a crisis crisis, as in more god rays, polygons, and foliage without using tricks and clever programming to improve performance. Optimization is the practice of improving performance in games without tearing down the visuals. Things like occlusion, dynamically not rendering what your player character can't see in game. Or LODs for objects in the distance to load lower quality models since they're so far away that you can't tell the difference. Tricks like these stop your computer from truly draining all resources in order for a game to simply run, but nowadays it's not always enough. Some games simply need better hardware to run because of too many graphics. So many graphics, look at them all out there. 
However, this assumes all titles are going for a lifelike 3D style, trying to look as realistic and highly detailed as possible, often against the wishes of God and man. But not every game does this, and I'd argue most games shouldn't. There's a plethora of brilliant art styles to choose from and mix and match. Hand-drawn, retro pixel art, stylized cell shading. More often than not, a game having a different art style will make for different and often far less demanding hardware requirements. Assuming it's optimized correctly, or even just a little bit, a pixel art game will always run better than a, say, true-to-life realistic one. And they can look better too, subjectively speaking. The aesthetics of flat colors, low polygon counts, full 2D aren't worse simply because they're simpler. It's all about how you use the aesthetic to your advantage. Indie games in particular have understood this for a long time. One of my favorite looking modern games is Unbeatable. I made a video about it here linked above and below. It's all hand-drawn anime core aesthetic and is being developed with the intention of being able to run on the oldest and worst hardware. Just because a game is new doesn't mean that your tech should have to be new in order to partake. Buying a console or a gaming PC is an investment and so it's completely fair to expect it to still be working years down the line. On PC in particular, most AAA games will offer graphical tweaks in order to reduce fidelity in exchange for performance. And this is good, but it shouldn't be an excuse for not taking older systems into account when developing titles. Especially when your metrics for a game being playable are your PS4 sounding like a jet engine in order to run Yakuza at an unstable 20 FPS. Listen to that baby purr. Obviously, at some point, tech becomes so dated that you're left with no choice but to move on. But in my opinion, especially with many people having less money than ever, the amount of time it takes for a modern gaming PC to become obsolete should be measured in double-digit years at least. Is this unrealistic? Maybe. But is it more consumer, environmentally, and developer-friendly? Absolutely. This is why we need more games from developers who are building their games with decade-old hardware in mind. Not as an afterthought, but as a core concept. If you're a game dev, ask yourself, who is this game for? And if your answer is, well, rich people mostly, maybe you need to rethink that. Games are for everybody, not just people who can afford a thousand dollar drop every five years. This isn't just a fight for the now. For the next decade and beyond, I want to see more games that look like Jet Set Radio and Octopath Traveler. Games with striking aesthetics that the most people will be able to play, tearing down a technical barrier of entry. Games like Celeste, Valorant, Stardew Valley, Fortnite, all can run on ten-year-old hardware without sacrificing money much, if anything, in the way of visuals. Their art styles lend themselves to being easier to run, paired with developers who care about optimization. And this isn't to say that if a game is realistic it runs bad, and if it's stylized it runs well. Titles like Metal Gear Solid 5, which runs great, and the original Java version of Minecraft, which does not, disprove that. However, the base level of optimization required to attain playability on older hardware for a stylized game is far lower than that of a game with extremely complex scenes to render. Hell, a lot of these stylized games are designed to be able to run on mobile devices after all. In fact, more games need to be on mobile. And more gamers need to take mobile games seriously. This is another cost to lifetime issue. Good phones that last a long time cost a pretty penny. But it's also an expense that many would consider necessary these days. Having a smartphone for many people these days is a requirement for employment, entertainment, and communication with the outside world. Scalpers can't really operate on a scale where they'll have a dramatic impact on the smartphone market with how many companies have skin in the game. Obviously, publishing a game on mobile is not as simple as getting it released on desktop, but if you're a developer with an in to the app store, consider making your games mobile friendly, if at all possible. All of this is to say the hardware required for modern, high fidelity, realistic looking games is generally speaking locked behind the prohibitive cost of modern tech, the shitty business practice of the worst of techies, and the lack of infrastructure for high-speed internet in much of the world. These are all issues that need to be addressed, but we're looking at a scale of years to decades to even make a dent there. In the interim, I want to see games with so-called worse-looking graphics. Stylized, cartoony games, full pixel art, anything with an aesthetic more striking than realism core. It will not only help your games stand out in a sea of lookalikes, but will give more people a chance to play. Indie games often take this approach out of necessity, but we've reached an 
era where games shouldn't have to look modern to look good. Having a back catalog of older games to play on older hardware is all well and good, but just because a game is new doesn't mean it should be unplayable on old hardware. Until it's cost effective for consumers to buy a new console or PC every couple of years, developers shouldn't be expecting them to do so. That'll be everything from me. Maybe follow me on Twitter if you want to hear me rant more about the modern gaming zeitgeist. Either way, thanks for watching, stay safe, and take it easy.